It's been over 15 years since the first Saints Row game swaggered onto our consoles and flipped the birds to anyone who dared to call it a GTA clone, but despite the series being old enough to drive its own car, it shows no signs of stopping just yet. In fact, we're just a stone's throw away from the release of Saints Row, a title that will serve as a reboot for the franchise rather than another sequel. You may well have played every title in the Saints Row series, but we can almost guarantee that there are secrets about the franchise that you weren't aware of, and that's why we're here today. Naturally, when we say that these are things you don't know, we're obviously being flippant, so please don't come for me in the comments if you're a Saints Row mega fan and knew all of this already. Every entry was news to us down at TJHQ, and we've assumed the same goes for at least most of you. All right, I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 things you didn't know about the Saints Row series. Number 10. Saints Row 2022 starts the gang from scratch. Okay, I admit this is probably one of the things that you, the viewer, are likely to know already, but we couldn't possibly write a list about the Saints Row series without at least acknowledging the upcoming reboot. Slated for release in 2022, Saints Row is set to be a fresh take on the series. Developer Volition has gone on record to say that Saints Row 4 was to the franchise what Moonraker was to James Bond, i.e. well outside the realm of reality, so for the reboot, the plan is to reel things in a bit. The comedy will still be there, but the devs are aiming to strike a balance between humour and seriousness, resulting in a game that aims to be, tonally at least, more like Saints Row the Third. Unlike previous games in the series, Saints Row will task players with starting a gang of their very own, alongside dissatisfied members of Santo Ileso's rival factions. The city will be broken up into nine districts, and it's down to the player to take over each of them to secure their gang's status as the top dogs. Based on what we've seen so far, despite the new direction, the game still feels very Saints Row, and we're excited to see what other surprises the reboot has in store. Number 9. The series has really upset the censors. This one might not come as much of a shock to anyone that's played the Saints Row series, as the games really don't shy away from ridiculous humour that, in some cases, borders on the obscene. There was one mission in particular, however, that Australian censors found so offensive that they refused to classify Saints Row 4, effectively banning it. In fact, it was the first game to be refused a rating after Australia introduced new guidelines in 2013 which allowed particularly eyebrow-raising games to be given an adults-only classification. The offending sequence was the Girls' Night Out mission, which saw the player teaming up with the Shaundies to try and get hold of some alien narcotics, with the theory being that they would give them the necessary edge to take out veteran child. The mission, which was optional, was removed from the game, and the Australian Classification Board finally bestowed a MA15 Plus rating upon it. Saints Row III also made waves in Japan, as the baseball bat known as the Penetrator you know, the one shaped like a Wilson, had to be redesigned in order to secure a Japanese release. We're assured the um, uh, physics remained the same, though. Number 8. Bling Bling over the years, the Saints Row series has evolved to the point where it's almost unrecognisable. The first Saints Row game was fairly grounded, with many critics comparing it favourably to the Grand Theft Auto series, but with every successive sequel, the franchise only got wackier. By the time Saints Row 4 rolled around, the protagonist was the President of the USA, and the whole thing was set in a simulation. Long before aliens were destroying the Earth, though, back before the first Saints Row was even released, things looked very different for the franchise. As we all know, Saints Row was released in 2006 as an Xbox 360 exclusive, but when development started in 2003, the game was set to be released on the PlayStation 2 and was going to be titled Bling Bling. According to the pitch that Volition presented to THQ, Bling Bling aimed to be a third-person action game about style, music, gangs, and guns, and would be the game equivalent of a gangster rap music video. In fairness, the pitch almost perfectly describes the final product, but we can't help but feel like the change of name benefited the game. Nods to the series roots can be found throughout the franchise, though, so if players are desperate for a bit of Bling Bling, they can always find some if they know where to look. Number 7. The Forgotten Mobile Games Although the series started out as an Xbox exclusive, over the years the Saints Row games have become available on a wide variety of platforms. 
It might surprise you to learn, however, that fans of the Saints could get their action fix whilst on the go thanks to a pair of tie-in mobile titles for the first two games. Owing to the fact that mobile technology in the late 2000s wasn't massively advanced, these games were on the more simplistic side, but they still attempted to capture the essence of their console counterparts. For the first game, players were expected to complete side missions in order to earn respect, and once they'd accrued enough of that, they could play the main missions and secure districts for the gang. Unfortunately, as ambitious as the project was, the game controlled horribly and most players gave up on it. The sequel fared slightly better with critics, but it was ultimately limited by the confines of the platform. If you're a Saints Row Mega fan, then it's likely you'd get something out of the two mobile games, but if you're the sort of person that only has a passing interest, we'd recommend just sticking with the regular console lot. Number 6. Saints Row the Third's Original Premise By 2011, when Saints Row the Third was released, it seemed like Volition had nailed down the formula for creating a Saints Row game. The Saints lose some territory, and the player character is instrumental in taking it back. Everyone has a jolly good time, and then they come back to do it again for the sequel. As it turns out, though, Saints Row the Third was originally intended to be quite different from the first two games. For a few short months at the beginning of its development, Volition ran with the idea of the protagonist being an undercover agent that was working to infiltrate the Saints. Had it gotten past the idea stage, the game would have been choice-based, presumably meaning that several different endings would have been available to the player. It just wasn't Saints Row, though, and so the idea was tossed out. At a loss for what to do, the team decided to make a tone video to help spark some inspiration, and this ended up including clips from Bad Boys 2, Hot Fuzz, and Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart. If those three things don't encapsulate the spirit of Saints Row the Third, then I don't know what does, really. Number 5. Saints Row 4 – The April Fool's Joke We've all seen game announcements that are so laughable that they feel like an April Fool's joke, but it isn't often that a game's reveal actually is one. This is exactly what happened to Saints Row 4, though, as it started life as a prank announcement for a standalone expansion to Saints Row the Third. On April the 1st, 2012, THQ and Volition proudly unveiled Enter the Dominatrix, which would be set in a simulation where players would be able to unleash various superpowers against alien invader Zinyak and his many followers. Does any of that sound familiar? By this point, a game titled Saints Row Part 4 was already in development, but the concept for the expansion pack was so well received that the game was scrapped and Volition expanded Enter the Dominatrix into the full game we now know as Saints Row 4. Enter the Dominatrix was later released as DLC and features an alternate look at the Zin invasion. In true Saints Row style, the various plot holes created by the DLC are poked fun at by the characters who regularly break the fourth wall. The whole thing is completely silly, which is rather fitting when you think back to its roots. Number 4. Money Shot like many long-running video game franchises, Saints Row has had its fair share of cancelled titles. A Nintendo DS game announced at E3 2010 never saw the light of day, and neither did a fighting game for the PlayStation Move and Xbox Kinect. Perhaps the most bizarre cancelled Saints Row title, however, has to be Money Shot, which was being developed for the Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network as a tie-in for Saints Row the Third. The idea was that gamers who played Money Shot would be able to unlock exclusive content for the main title, and vice versa. Had it seen a release, Money Shot would have tasked players with guiding a bullet fired from a sniper rifle to its intended destination. Points could be accrued along the way for hitting certain targets and causing destruction, and there were various goals that players needed to complete for each level. Sadly, due to the company's financial troubles, THQ closed down its Phoenix development studio before the game could be released. This was a shame for a number of reasons. Obviously, it makes us sad when any studio closes down, but also because based on the gameplay footage we've seen, Money Shot could well have been a fun way to kill a couple of hours. And a couple of people too. Probably. Number 3. Saints Row 2's Interesting Special Producer It isn't unusual for a game's marketing team to use celebrities to promote their product. Over the years, we've seen everyone from Aubrey Plata to Kim Cattrall peddling games, so it should come as no shock that the Saints Row marketing department have felt the need to rope in a famous face or two to sell their titles. Clearly, they made some assumptions about the type of celebs that would appeal to their game's audience, because on more than one occasion, they've roped in adult actresses to star in their marketing campaigns. For Saints Row III, the decision was made to cast Sasha Grey in one of the game's many trailers. Viewers will no doubt recognize Sasha from her role in the 2012 horror flick Would You Rather. She also provided the voice for Viola de Winter in both Saints Row the Third and Get Out of Hell. Sasha wasn't the first porn star to appear in the series, though, as Tara Patrick was brought in for Saints Row 2, appearing in both a trailer for the game and as one of the player's homies in the Altor Exposed DLC. 
Allegedly, Terra was hired as a special producer, though apparently this didn't go down too well with some of the game's developers. Number 2. The 31 Theory There have been many examples over the years of creators repeatedly inserting certain numbers into their works as little easter eggs. Pixar did it with A113, hiding it in everything from license plates to classroom doors, and it seems like the devs working on the Saints Row series have done something similar with the number 31 for seemingly unknown reasons. In Saints Row the Third, Kinsey tells Josh during their homey conversation that everything that's important in the world relates to the number 31. The specific example she gives is that the best season of Nightblade, Season 3, aired in January and had 13 episodes, but the number can be found all over the franchise. The code to the penthouse in Saints Row is 3131, Saints Row 2 has a mission called Assault on Precinct 31, and Gat states that he was in prison for two years and 31 days. In Saints Row the Third, Murder Brawl 31 takes place, and in Saints Row 4, Zinyak refers to Virtual Steelport as Simulation 31. There are way more examples of the number popping up than just those, but if we listed them all, we'd never get to the number one entry. Speaking of, number one, a million dollar edition of Saints Row 4 actually existed. Yep. You heard that right, boys and girls. In what can only be described as a PR stunt, Saints Row 4 publisher Deep Silver teamed up with UK retailer Game to offer a very, very special edition of the title to someone with incredibly deep pockets. Alongside a copy of Saints Row 4, obviously, whichever moneybags bought the Super Dangerous Wad Wad edition could expect to receive the following. A replica dubstep gun, a day of spy training, a hostage rescue experience, a shopping spree, a seven-night stay in Washington, a seven-night stay in Dubai with flights, a brand new Toyota Prius, one year's insurance for said Prius, one year's Super Car Club membership, a Lamborghini Gallardo, a cosmetic procedure of the purchaser's choice, plastic surgery in other words, and a trip to space with Virgin Galactic. Unfortunately, we've been unable to find any clues as to who bought the super dangerous Wad Wad edition, if indeed anyone purchased it at all. It is, sadly, no longer available on the game website, so it either went to someone who stayed quiet about it, or it was simply removed from sale. Either way, the Super Dangerous Wad Wad Edition is one of the most insane things we've ever seen, which is impressive considering we've played Saints Row 4. The Wilson-shaped baseball bat, however, will be forever etched in my memory.